So what we're going to discuss now is a skill um, to prove that a set of vectors actually is a subspace of a larger vector space. To prove that a set of vectors forms a subspace, we must show that if we add two vectors in the space, we get another vector in that space, which is called closure under addition. And if we multiply a vector by a scalar in the space, we get another vector in the space. That's called scalar multiplication. If we consider V and W that are members of the uh, subspace and K is a scalar, then showing that K times V plus W is in the set satisfies both conditions. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show that K times V plus W is in the set will satisfy both closure under addition and scalar multiplication. So let's take an example. Suppose that S is the subset of P2R consisting of all the polynomials of the form AX, AX minus B. So what I want to do, I want to show if I have V and W belonging to my set S and I have K belonging to the real numbers, the scalars, okay? Is K times V plus W in S, all right? Does it have the form of AX minus B, all right? So I'm gonna let V equal A1X minus B1 and W equal A2X minus B2. So those are two just, arbitrary vectors that are in the space, right? A1 being a scalar, B1 being a scalar, A2 being a scalar, B2 being a scalar, okay? So now I'm gonna take K times V plus W. That's gonna equal K times A1X minus B1 plus A2X minus B2. And if I rearrange a little bit, I'm gonna get K times a1 or K, A1X minus KB1 plus KA2X minus KB2. And that's going to then equal KA1X plus KA2X minus KB1 minus KB2. And this thing here is going to then equal, okay, x times ka1 plus ka2 minus uh, k minus, excuse me, minus 1 times kb1 plus kb2. And here's the thing. Since a1, a2, k, b1, and b2, belong to the reals, what we get is we get something of the proper form. We end up with a real number, right? Ka1 plus Ka2, okay? Um, we'll make that equal to A3. And Kb1 plus Kb2 equal to, excuse me, Kb2 equal to B3. What we end up with is we end up with A3x minus b3 and so k times v plus w belongs to s okay so kind of you know what what should be clear here or what we want to make clear here is is you're going to just take arbitrary members of the uh of the space in this case that's a v of the form a1 x minus b1 and a w of a2 x minus b2 and you're going to add this value, the scalar multiples, okay? And then you're just going to show, and basically this is how it's going to work. You're going to end up factoring in some way or another. You're going to show that that one belongs to S as well. Well, R4, and then S is going to be a set of all the vectors of the form X1, 0, X2, 2. And what we want to do is we want to see, is this a subspace or not? So first, let's check under addition, okay? So if I take, let's say we have... Um, Right, I'm gonna take two vectors. I'll take x1, we'll call this uh, x1, zero, x2, two, okay? And we're gonna to add to that another one of the vectors of the same form, call it y1, zero, y2, two. This is gonna then equal x1 plus y1 
0, x2 plus y2, and then 4. Now these first two terms, x1 plus y1 and x2 plus y2, they're not a problem, but this 4 is, okay? Since 4 does not equal 2, right, our resulting vector, which we might call v plus w, right, is not in s, because every vector in s ends in a 2, okay? So s is not a subspace of R4. So in this case, we showed by adding two together that we got something that couldn't possibly be another member of our set. And so consequently, we don't have a subset, a subspace, excuse me. So let's talk a little bit about an upshot of this and that, so since the subspace is also a vector space, this means that if the subset does not include the zero vector, then that suffices to show that the set is not a subspace. For example, the set of all vectors S that made up the vectors of the form X1, zero, X2, two, does not contain the zero vector because there's a two in the fourth component of every vector. So consequently, the zero vector, which is, right, is equal to, in this case, zero, 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 is not contained in the set. Since the zero vector is in every single vector space, what that tells me is that this particular set is not a subspace. So one of the cool things about linear algebra um, in general is, is that the work inside of linear algebra applies not only to vectors, numbers, but it also applies to things like polynomials, matrices. And in this case, we're gonna look at differential equations. So the set of solutions to any first order homogeneous differential equation is the subset of all differentiable functions, all right? And so let's say, for example, we take an arbitrary um, first order differential equation, homogeneous differential equation. So that's a1x plus a2xy, a1xy prime plus a2xy equals zero. Now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna see, well, first, I, I kinda wanna just check and make sure that the zero vector is included there. So if y equals zero, okay, then y prime equals zero, right? So we take the derivative and there we go. And so a1 y prime plus a2 y is gonna equal a1 times zero plus a2 times zero, which is just equal to zero. So the zero vector is actually included in there or the zero function in this case. Now, what about, you know, just in general, what about under addition? So we'll let y, and x, okay, be solutions to this first order differential equation. Actually, let's change it to z, just to avoid confusion, to the de, okay? All right, so what that means is, so y plus z, okay, we're gonna take a1 times y plus z prime plus a2, y plus z, okay, that's the addition. And what we'll see is, is that if you take the derivative of y plus z, you end up with just a1 y prime plus a1 z prime plus a2 y plus a2 z, okay, because that's just multiplication of functions, okay? Now this is then gonna equal, and we'll rearrange a1 y prime, a1 y prime plus a2 y plus a1 z prime plus a two Z, okay? Well, this whole thing is a homogeneous function, so it's equal to zero, and this thing is equal to zero, right? Because they both are in this set, right? The set of solutions to this homogeneous function. So what we get is zero plus zero, which just equals zero. So the set of functions are, the set of first order or of solutions to first order homogeneous differential equations is closed under addition. Now we just need to check for scalar multiplication. We could have done this all at the same time, but I think it's easier this way or, or better this way. So we'll let, okay, K belong to the reals, okay? And Y belong to our set, right? Call our set S. That's the set of all um, the solutions to a first order differential equation. So, a1 
times ky, okay, prime, plus a2 times ky, okay, equals, that's going to be a1, or that's going to be a1 ky prime, right, because k is just a constant, plus a2 ky, and that's going to equal k times a1 y prime plus a2 y, a2 y. Now, this whole thing here, that is equal to zero because this is, because y is a, a solution to the first order homogeneous differential equation. So this is going to equal k times zero, which just equals zero. So ky is also a solution. to the first order homogeneous differential equation. What that means is that the solutions to first order DEs, homogeneous DEs, I should say, is a subspace. is a subspace of, and the letter we use is C. C actually ends up being called CN, okay? Cool, right? That's kind of neat. That functions, like sets of functions can actually be thought of as vector spaces. All right, that's very nice. So just to kind of like wrap things up, when we want to prove uh, that a set of vectors is in fact a subspace, what we want to do is that we want to prove that it's closed under addition and closed under uh, scalar multiplication. We can do that all at once if we want to, utilizing uh, that distributed property that I showed above. On the other hand, if we don't want to utilize that, we can do it one at a time. To show that something's not a subspace, either we show that it's not closed under addition, it's not closed under our scalar multiplication, or we can also sometimes show, most of the time actually, show that the zero vector is not included. Although showing that the zero vector is not included is not sufficient to show that something is a subspace, all right? It just shows that something's not. And it turns out that there are um, sets that are not subspaces that do also include the zero vector. So just be careful with that, okay? All right, so this concludes the lesson.